In yesterday's video, we built three scenes for the first three episode of Tales of the Empire, which covered Morgan Elsbeth. Now, if you haven't seen that video, don't worry. I will be showing them off at the end of this video too, so there's no need to go hunt for yesterday's video. But today, we are going to be building three scenes for the last three episodes, which of course center around Barris Offie. Now, you've seen the silhouette in the thumbnail, but before I reveal the first scene, I'd just like to say a quick thanks and a shout out to all you guys. 1,200 subs already. It's been like a week since we hit 1,000. Thank you so, so much. And a bigger shout out to all you in the comments, leaving all your questions and just general nice comments because it really does encourage me to just keep pushing through and especially with the bongo, I cannot wait for that to be finished. But that is enough talking. Let's get to the first Barris Offy scene. And the first scene that represents the very first episode of, well, I think it's like the fourth episode of the series, but the first Barris Offy episode of the show is when the Grand Inquisitor takes her into the training room in Fortress Inquisitorius, which we have seen before. We've seen it in the Kenobi show. We get to see it at the end of Fallen Order as well. And I think that's about everywhere we've seen it so far, as well as, of course, this show. The Grand Inquisitor takes her to a training room. She gets handed a green saber. I don't recognize any of the sabers we saw in the show, which I've gone through my dictionary of Star Wars lightsabers, which they have made a book about. It's a really, really cool book if you're a fan of the hilts. And none of them seem to line up too closely to any of them. So perhaps they got to create their own sabers for the show, but I have added a few different pieces to make each of these sabers unique and flipped them around because some of them were positioned slightly different to the others. And of course we have the one in Barry's Offie's hand, which has that nice new frosted green blade. I'm a big fan of Lego's new frosted blades. Actually, it's, it doesn't come across on camera, but it is one of their new frosted blades. It just looks like a regular one, but if you've got any in your inventory, you'll know exactly what I mean. And I've got the nice red lights on the floor, but this episode was quite interesting with how they played it out. I feel like this was the most impactful out of the three, at least personally. So let me know down in the comments which of these three episodes is your favorite as well as which of the scenes is your favorite. Now, one of my favorite techniques for this model comes actually on the side here. I don't know if you can see it, but I've used one of these one by two grill pieces because in the show you have the strip lights. And I think if we could get a little LED light behind one of these pieces, that would work perfectly. Even on the top, I don't think it'd be too bad. White and blacks are very hard to show on camera, so forgive me if I haven't captured that properly, but I'm sure you know about the elements that I'm talking about. Now, this is another pyramid. So like with Morgan Elsbeth, we've got episode one on the left, episode two in the top center spot, and episode three on the right, which was perfect for this, because once again, like with Morgan Elsbeth's bell tower, the scene I took from episode two did happen on the top of a rocky mountain. And actually, this is my favorite scene when Barry's Offie goes against the Inquisitor, force pushes her off, and it's just a great scene. Now, of course, I don't have, I don't actually think I own any Inquisitors. I need to change that. I'll have a little look, see how expensive they are on Bricklink. I think we've seen three from Kenobi and two from Rebels, but there was a Grand Inquisitor for both. So we've got four Inquisitors. I would like a few more Inquisitors from LEGO. Perhaps they can give us an Inquisitor battle pack, which just gives us a bunch of Inquisitor pieces. It's very, very unlikely, I know. But I did enjoy working on the rock work for the top. As it was only a base layer, I wanted to push the boat out a little and get it looking really, really nice. So as you can see, mixture of slopes, two by twos, one by twos, even the one by one cheese slopes and even some of these round holes with the pin, which I really did like implementing them. It just makes it look a lot more textured than usual without going over the top and a bit too far. And then we have this Death Trooper, which recently, if you've watched my Bad Batch builds, you'll know I used it for the Clone Assassin. It was the closest thing we got, pretty much perfect without the rangefinder. This time, if we could get rid of these side bits that stick out at the bottom of the helmet. It'd be perfect for a Barry's Offer Inquisitor. I think Star Wars know that they're making similar things and my headcanon is it's just for us Lego builders so that it's easier to design custom figures. But the Death Trooper does have a longer lightsaber. Still haven't got my hands on an Inquisitor saber either. I don't know 
what I've been doing, I really wanted to pick up the transport scythe and I don't know if I made a video on it, but I did go hunting around a bunch of B&Ms that were meant to have it for like 50 quid. I just didn't end up finding one. So hopefully one day I can get my hands on them figures. But the second episode, pretty easy. Not too much happened, but there was that big tipping point at the end. Now that takes us into our third episode. Barris broke off from the Inquisitors, stopped working for the Empire. Well, for Lord Vader and Emperor Palpatine at least. And decided to become a healer. Now, false healing would have been taught in the Jedi Temple, and I'm not sure Barris was old enough to have been around when it was, but Luminara definitely was, as it's something I think even Qui-Gon talked about in one of the books. I think that was Master and Apprentice if you are interested, but this time I've built a micro scene. Now stick around because I do also build Barris Offie as a custom minifigure, and I'll include that as its own portion of this, but I wanted the scene where the Inquisitor walks into the cave. Well, I actually wanted to build the cave, but it just didn't look right. It looked like a hedge maze when I built that. So I broke that down. Initially had Barris and the Inquisitor when they bumped into each other, but there weren't that much room on an 8x8. So instead had the Inquisitor walking off into the cave, which I know it isn't explicitly stated if she makes it out in the end. I'm pretty sure she does. That was the whole point of focusing on the drop saver. She's also left the Inquisitors and joined the Path of the Light. But we also have this little tent down here, which is where Barris was taking customers, I guess, and helping them with their troubles, healing them, and, well, just saving them from the Empire. The kid that was brought to her had nothing wrong, but the Empire was just trying to overcharge her for her medical bill, which I'm sure is actually a problem many people face. So. It's really good that Star Wars have brought light to the issue, but I'm very happy with how I managed to get the different slopes and just add something to what otherwise is quite a simplistic model. Now, you could probably even make this at home with the different colored slopes. It doesn't all have to match mine or what you see in the scene. Use your creativity, let it run wild, and really models like this just go to show how easy some mocks can be. I've built a custom micro figure using just three studs and I really do like the white poncho. I think Star Wars definitely need to make more ponchos. I can't believe Cal Kestis doesn't get a poncho in the Star Destroyer. So let's put these three together and actually before we do let's show off the custom minifigure for this scene. This custom minifigure is definitely the easiest of the bunch and once again like with Morgan Elsbeth's four minifigures the three minifigures for this will have their own shorts detail in the parts you'll need for each of them, but I can go over this one right now. This is Han's jacket and legs from a Hoth poly bag, a while bag. It's the one that came with the ski mask face with the giant hood that is, I think, only used for that and a Clone Wars Anakin. And speaking of, I've used the Clone Wars Anakin hair just like from the first Barris minifigure and Barris off his head, which I think does represent the character really well. You can add Barris's hands to the figure, but I think gloves make sense considering the climate of the planet that she's staying on. So a nice easy minifigure. You can definitely add Luke or Qui-Gon's poncho, especially if you picked up the recent Sith Infiltrator, or you could even make your own one out of a white material. But I think this minifigure represents what it needs to, and not all customs need to be too detailed. Not only do we have Barris's three scenes here, but we also have Morgan Elsbeth's. If you missed it, I built one from the first episode, second and third. We've got Dathomir, then we've got her fighting Rook on the bell tower, and then we've got her waiting for the New Republic and eventually Mando and Ahsoka to show up. Hidden behind the doors, protected by her HK droids, but I really like how these both turned out. Barris's is definitely a lot more simplistic, but I feel like her story in general was the easiest one to tell. Morgan is such a complex character that comes from one of the dramatic events at the end of the Clone Wars. Of course, we've got the Empire taken over, which has been covered in Bad Batch. We've then got the Night of a Thousand Tears, which is covered through Mando. And I know Dathomir has been brought up in Clone Wars. There was a few deleted arcs as well. But this is something we really need to get a full story about. And it looks like in Morgan Elsbeth we might have it because it is one of the big three dramatic changes that came with the end of the Clone Wars. Whereas 
Barris just got trained as an Inquisitor, left the Inquisitors and then made another Inquisitor leave, which I guess it is a bit more complex and complicated than that, but that is the main storyline. Then again, if we go over to Morgan, you can just say she had her home set fire to, she had a fire burning inside of her, and then she set fire to someone else's home world. So I guess you can always break it down simplistically, but let me know what you think about these two. Again, that Death Trooper is very, very versatile in terms of characters. You can even switch out the helmet and have them be any black suited character. So I guess that's what gives them the versatility. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like if you did enjoy it and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. And may the bricks be with you always.